Now I'd like to start off with an apology today because I feel as though maybe I got a little bit overexcited in one of last week's videos and I did, uh, I did mention the, um, the F word and uh, a, number of, uh, a number of halibut wrote in who were quite offended and uh, also just sorry a, a couple of cod as well so I'm, I'm very very sorry to all my fish viewers there'll be no repeat of the um, the uh, the F word again fishing yeah sorry and there'll be no repeat of the filth that there was last time so I'm always having strange things delivered to the house you know various pieces of test equipment and some of it's quite heavy so of course I, I really need to thank both my well both my wife and the postman because you know certainly my missus she's, she's always quite happy to help the postman empty his sacks in the morning when the teletypewriter keys are operated or a tape message is fed into the reperforator direct current impulses are created these impulses represent current flow but in reality they will not be as orderly as this for the various letters and symbols of the teletypewriter machines create various combinations like this for letter T, or like this for letter R, or like this for letter B. So we have an output signal containing various combinations of DC impulses, a signal that accurately represents the message typed on the teletypewriter. The DC impulses operate the receiving teletypewriter, which then duplicates the teletypewriter traffic transmitted by the distant station. what's the point in having a protocol analyzer well i guess the easiest way to put it is it's it's kind of like having a voltmeter but for digital circuits um, when you're looking at data systems it was a bit like when we had the logic analyzer yesterday everything's working at high speed and you need a piece of equipment that's capable of sitting there and recording and doing timing it'd be no good just putting your voltmeter on these data lines because they're just moving too quickly so you need to have a piece of test equipment that can sit there and actually do the monitoring for you and can actually do more specialist tests like look at the uh, the frequency of the data that you're sending you need to make sure i think we looked at this yesterday you need to do things like make sure that the characters are framed correctly that the timing is correct um, there's all sorts of problems you could have with sending your serial data and yeah a voltmeter would be no good at detecting these and an old oscilloscope wouldn't have been any good either because it wouldn't have been capable of of catching these kind of pseudo random uh, pieces of data I mean a modern digital scope can do it no problem but again back in the day in the 70s people weren't using digital scopes they were using analog CRTs uh, and that's why you know they really developed a specialist piece of test gear which is what the protocol analyzer is so time for the big switch on So here we've got our Hewlett Packard 4952 protocol analyzer and it's got a date on it here um, 1986 and it's using revision one of the software. Right well I noticed it's got a, a floppy disk drive and it's got this blanking protector in which we'll just get rid of and uh, I don't exactly know what we're going to use the disk drive for but I went rooting through some boxes at work and uh, you know I had a huge stack of uh, three and a half inch discs and I threw them out about a month ago because I thought I'm never going to use them again so I came to look for a disc and I couldn't find any but I managed to uh, just find a box of uh, old programming tools and I've got no idea what this was it was obviously something from Rockwell Automation basic module development software I can't remember what it what it is so there's probably some exotic piece of machinery that I designed sometime in the past that needs this but ah, uh, say it'll be just make it ours then Cover that cover up the evidence of my crime uh, right okay so there we go I've got a disc we can put that in right 
Oh, can hear disk drive noises. And uh, let's see what the options are on the screen. So at switch on, we've got uh, we're presented with uh, a little series of menus, and those menus are operated via these uh, you know these keys which are just underneath the screen. So we've got the option to do auto configure. We can set up. We've got a monitor menu, a simulation menu, a run menu, examine data. And then just right at the right hand side of the screen, it looks as though this this uh, this screen is actually shifted over to the right slightly. And it's as though it could do with adjusting and pushing that way a little bit. It's got the words more, but you can just see that because it's kind of off the screen. So I think this maybe isn't centered perfectly, but there's a button here that says more on it. So we'll press that and we can do a reset. There's something called a BERT menu. Now, I know from playing with these uh, things before, BERT is, I think it's bit error rate. I don't know if that's something to do with the timing or that's just the number of corrupted bits that you receive. I'm not exactly sure, but that's what BERT stands for. We can connect to a remote printer. We've got something called mass storage and we've got a self test. Let's see what the mass storage does. Disk not formatted. Oh, right, okay. How do we format the disk then? Uh, load, store, delete, recover, more. Let's try more again. Format. Let's format a disk. God, how long is it since you formatted a three and a half inch floppy? It must be at least 10 years. Maybe it's 20. Uh, come on, format. Disk will be destroyed. Yeah, fine. Return. Oh, no, execute. Soft key. Oh, can anybody hear that disk drive loveliness? Can you hear that? I'll put the microphone up. That's too good to miss, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Up, hey, there we go. So, what can we do? We can uh, directory, I don't suppose there's anything on there. We can load something. Oh, it needs a file name. Uh, exit that. So it looks like you could basically, I should have said that, you can press these soft keys and you can get into a menu like load. And if you want to go back, you press the halt or exit key and that takes you back to the previous menu. We can store things. Uh, file name. All oh, right, so we can create a file name. I don't, there's some type, different types of files we can create here. Menu files or name files. Norwich. Oh, we can put a comment. Oh, very sensible for me. That not, nothing even slightly rude there, is there? Unless, of course, you know what the uh, the army meaning of Norwich is. And execute. I assume that key. Oh, and we've written the word Norwich to the disk, and that's taken up 33 sectors. And uh, given a little prompt there, does anybody know what this means? Well. If you're wondering what the disk drive is for, I didn't explain that. I'm not totally sure, but I think the idea is that this this unit you can actually write some simple um, basic programs on, and you can you can write those programs to look at the incoming data streams and do things to them, or maybe automatically output warnings or alarms when it sees something. So. I guess it's a bit like the old programmable calculators where you you know you could write a little a very a very basic little program inside them to make them do things. Uh, I don't know much more than that. I did have a quick glance at the um the manual, but it very quickly got quite complicated and um more complicated than uh, you know I could be bothered reading. So well, yeah, disk drive very good, lovely. Uh, what else can we do? Get back out of there. We can do auto configuration setup monitor simulate uh, let's have a quick look at the uh, go back to the more and we we had some self tests there can, can we have a look at self tests crt test let's see what crt test we can do don't know let's try that oh lots of interesting characters there escape that character set two mm. exit that video pattern Lovely, little raster, inverse video, mm, not very exciting, exit, is that everything, exit again, we can do a keyboard test, depress any key will cause the key identification to be displayed, press exit to exit, 
soft key one. Oh, right, the, the, I was correct, you call them soft keys. So these keys are soft keys because they line up with menus on the screen. Uh, soft key two, soft key three, and it remembers it. W, E, yeah, okay. I think some of these are contacts behind these keyboards on these switches. They just feel a bit dirty. They don't always work first time. And I'm guessing that they're probably a bit tarnished and they're going to get better as we use them. Exit that. Loop test. Uh, disconnect network before executing. Menus and data will be destroyed. Yeah, don't like the idea of that, so we won't do that. So, again, auto config, set up, monitor menu, simulate menu, run menu, example, example, exam data, example data, maybe. Don't know. Uh, what does auto configure do? Auto configure mode, waiting for data. So I guess we've got to connect some data to it. So we'll try that in a second. Set up. All right, okay. So it looks like we can... Um, this is... Uh, let's go back again. So there's a setup button. Let's choose that. So if you know what protocol you're expecting to come in, you can um, set up the analyzer, I guess, to look for that. Don't know what a lot of these things are. HDLC, don't know what that is. ASCII 8-bit code, yeah, I think we know what ASCII 8-bit code is. That we recognise, baud rate, bit rates, 9,600 a second. We can set our parity to none. And then we've got error checking here, which is set to CCITT, don't know what that is. Display, two lines, not sure what we do with that. Oh, it looks like these soft keys can choose different uh, data formats here. So that's set to HDLC. So let's let's try. You can have SDLC X25. I think these are all protocols, aren't they? These are all serial protocols. But yeah, not sure. Right. Well, we need to feed some data into this, or it's not going to do anything, is it? I don't know if it, how it will look on the film, but I'm just noticing that the uh, the CRT screen is actually beating with the uh, the camera refresh so i don't know how that's going to look when i do the final editing so uh hopefully you can see that i'm sorry if you can't so it looks like we can connect our 25-way connector into here here's our nine-way connector and we're going to plug this this is a usb to serial convert we're going to plug this into a laptop start up a terminal program and see if we can uh squirt some stuff into it. I'm having a brew first so. So we're coming out of the pod here. Oh, we've got lots of twists in the cable there. Better just straighten that or the uh, the electrons might not be able to get down it. Because they, they won't go around bends, you know. So this uh, USB to serial converter is connected on COM6. Within the Bray terminal you can actually set up what they call macros and those are basically you can set up a push button on here see these soft keys you can set these up and then you can put data in these fields here and when you press a button it will automatically transmit the data across so it's really handy for testing things but another thing you can do is you can just put a tick next to uh, the, the data field here and it will then automatically send the data uh, without you having to press any buttons so what i've actually done is i've just written the channel name here all the gear no idea and um, i think this time here is set to 500 i think that's milliseconds but we'll change that to 100 milliseconds and then we can start it transmitting So I noticed that when we started the laptop transmitting the serial data there's a little lcd on this uh, this data pod that receives the incoming serial information and uh, the, the LCD display on it came alive when we started transmitting the data and uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's telling us in total but I have noticed that basically the RD symbol there which I'm guessing is received data is, uh, is flashing on and off and I'm guessing that's flashing in time with the data that it's receiving so maybe just to prove that I can just turn off the terminal program Okay, and that stopped flashing, so we'll just turn it back on again. We're definitely transmitting some data to the uh, protocol analyzer. Whether or not we'll be able to interpret it, it's a different thing. 
So we've got the laptop pumping away and literally filling the protocol analyzer with serial goodness. And we can see that because we've got the lights flashing here on the uh, interface pod. I think the first thing to try is actually just try the auto configuration. And uh, what I'm guessing that will do is it's going to try and identify what the protocol is. Number of start bits, stop bits, speed, all that kind of thing. So we we'll press the auto configure. It's receiving data. It says it's 9,600 and then it's jumped to this second screen. And there we go. We've got the words, all the gear, no idea. So that's being received uh, via the serial port from the uh, computer at the moment. So what else can we do? Stop the display. Okay, start the display. We can get, it looks like we can get a summary of the information. So it's identified that it's a character protocol. The code it's using ASCII 8, which I think is actually just the number of um, bits that it's using in the, uh, you know, in the data package and the computer is set to use 8 bits. We've got the bit rate, second, uh, the bit rate set to 9600 board, parity none, transparent, is that transpar? I don't know what that is, mode, asynchronous, uh, display two line, don't know what that does really. Error checking, none. I thought it would have actually, um, you know, told us what the number of start and stop bits are and things like that. And it doesn't seem to be doing that. Um, although I don't know if that's actually implied in the ASCII code there. I don't think it is. So I wonder why it doesn't actually show you the start and stop bits. Yeah, it really just tells us whether we've got parity. So we can go back to look at the data. Mm, lovely. I think this could get boring quite quickly, couldn't it? Uh, escape from there. So what else can we do? Well, I think for the next little test, what we could try and do is record some data from the computer into the, uh, the buffer memory on this protocol analyzer. And then we'll write that to a floppy disk and then see if we can uh, import it back from the disk. So we'll press the auto configure button again to read the data in. So it's done that. And there we go. Okay, looks like there was a little bit of corruption the first time it fired up there, but this time we've changed the message slightly, so it's telling us it's a, it's a, it's a channel, all the gear, no idea. It's uh, about protocol analyzers, there it is, and it's the HP 49, 4952A. Let's stop that importing stuff, exit, exit again. When you look for the mass storage menu, there it is. We want to store and we'll give it a file name, which is uh, all the gear, GR. And I think you've got some options here. You can, uh, the file type where, I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but basically I found before that we need to store data. If you actually press menu, I think it might just save setup functions and stuff like that. It's kind of a preset utility, but we actually want to store data. So basically we press the change the field to data and then tab down to the comments. Let's call it my first serial data. And then we press execute, execute again disk drive light came on and it's written a file called all the gear its type is data and it's used 129 sectors and we've got two two thousand three hundred and twenty three sectors left so that, I guess that's just telling us how much of the disk we've used come back out of that menu and what I just want to do is I just want to reset the machine itself so to make sure we've cleared out the buffer. So I think we need to do more, reset. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's cleared everything out. Now we need to load the data. So more menu, mass storage, load and enter. So I think that's loaded the data back into memory, exit again. And then I think exam is examining data, so press that. All right, okay. And we can see uh, that must be the very start of the data that we started recording there. And it does look as though the very first packet that came in 
was corrupted. So I'm wondering if that's the, uh, well, I don't know why it's corrupted is a simple answer. It could be that that's when it was actually just trying to configure itself and work out what the data packet was, you know, the start and stop bits and the timing. So I'm not sure about that. Um, but it, once it's actually got past that first corrupted packet, what can we do? Can we roll down? Doesn't seem to do anything. Roll. Next try. Next page. So we're just paging all through the data we've recorded there. There's a button here. Timer and controls. Don't know what that does. Let's press it. Just seems to give us a little bit of the summary. It says we're using a protocol HDLC. Don't know what that is. Code. It's back to saying that it's the um, the ASCII eight code. Bits 9600. Basically, it's recorded that. So, we've just proven we can um, record and receive data from the, uh, from the serial string. So, that's, yeah, that's a useful thing to be able to do. Well, I've just been doing some more button pressing. And one of the things that you, I found that you can do is you can actually send data from the protocol analyzer back out. And uh, to do that, You've got to use this simulate menu and what it's asking you for is the first thing it's saying do you want to simulate a DTE or a DCE now I think I mentioned that earlier basically the DTE is the computer end that's uh, data terminal equipment and DCE is data circuit equipment so a DCE is a device like a modem which um, you know, it, it receives information, or basically, I think it's not in control. Whereas the DTE is in control, is in control. So, what we want to use, we want to set the DTE to transmit data to our computer, which is effectively acting uh, as a listening device because we're just going to receive data into it. So, I think what we've got to do is got to choose DTE, and then. I was playing with this earlier, so we basically we have to write what it is we want to send. So I'm going to write, what can I write? I love fishing. And we've got some options for how we're going to send that. We can send that as basically an, a an ASCII text string. We could send it in hex format or we could send it in binary. So I think if we press these it doesn't really change very much. But we want to send a text string. So once you've put in the message that you actually want to send, we have to exit out of there and then we have to go to this run menu. And from the run menu you have to go to the simulator. So we choose simulate. And that's basically just now put up the words I love fishing. So in theory this message I love fishing should have been transmitted from the protocol analyzer to the listening device, which, uh, as we said, is called a DCE. So we've gone from the DTE to the DCE. Yeah, try saying that when you're pissed. I'm struggling when I'm sober. So I'm just going to run the simulation now. And the protocol analyzer has transmitted the words, I love fishing, back to the laptop. So we're getting two-way communications now. So I guess that's slightly interesting. Yeah, but not that interesting, is it? Well, I'm not sure if you remember the other day when we were looking at the LCD module, we had a problem with the word phishing. Well, I'd like you to imagine a similar problem where, for example, we're sending a string of uh, serial data, and instead of sending what we want to send, just occasionally, we send the word dog. And uh, maybe you'd want to be warned whenever that word dog appeared in the serial string. So. One of the things that you can actually do with this uh, protocol analyzer, and I think I mentioned it earlier, is that you can actually program it. And you can program it to do lots of quite complicated things. But what I've programmed it to do is just sit and look for the word dog. So if we just go to the, the monitor menu here, so you can see we've got a couple of blocks. Now what I've put in the first block is when the DCE so basically, this is acting as the, the DCE, so it's receiving information. When it receives the word dog, it then goes to block two. Now, block two is the one that's underneath it. And in block two, we've simply got the words beep. Now, when the, uh, 
what those the words beep mean is well it it means like you think it means it makes the protocol analyzer make a beep sound and then it goes back to block one which is the top there and starts again so it looks a little bit like um basic or something doesn't it um, but it's it's not it's kind of their own language that they've invented now it was really really painful to type in this because you can't just type the words you've got to select them from menus and uh, if you get something wrong it's really awkward to delete the line and go back again or certainly I'm finding it really awkward unless there's an easy way of doing it so basically you can write a little program and, and this is obviously a very simple program but you can write much more sophisticated programs to look for timing errors or bit errors or really any kind of problem you might have with your data packets you can write a little program to pick them up and then you can even make it um, you know write the time and date that that occurred to a file or you can make it go beep or you can make it highlight the word or you can make it even um, send a, a, a serial string back out again so yeah it's quite flexible I mean that's the whole uh, key to having an instrument that you can program to do stuff so we'll just quit out of this menu and then we'll go back to our, uh, I think it's a run menu we need to go to. So we'll go to the run menu. And then we'll start monitoring. And at the moment, we're just getting the words, all the gear, no idea. And it's saying that it's a protocol analyzer. And we're also sending some data to say it's a HP 4952A. So what I'm going to do now, just randomly, I'm going to start, start introducing the word dog into the serial data stream. And uh, basically, I've just set the terminal program up to say dog every three seconds. So here we go. We'll turn that on now. And I've got to admit, I can't see the word dog appearing on the screen, but I'm sure it's there. I wonder if we can make it make that a bit more obvious. Let's see if we can edit my little program. Although, like I say, it's very tedious to do this, but we'll have a go. So beep and then highlight. And then... Now we've got to tell it to go to block one. So how do we do that? Go to block maybe, go to block one. Okay. So in theory, I'm not sure how it highlights it. I guess we're going to find out. Go to block one. Off we go. It's collecting data now. Let's start sending the dog word now. All right. Okay. It wasn't very obvious, but Okay, in theory it's highlighting the word now. So let's stop that. Exit. And we'll go to examine data. Oh, I think I saw a dog there. Gone past it. Previous page. Alright, okay. It seems to have highlighted just the letter G for some reason. I'm not sure why it highlights the end of the word. But can you see there? It's, it has highlighted the, the G character in the dog word. And then the other thing I've done is we've also incrementing something. So I've set up a counter and the count, the number of the counter, you can have lots of counters, but our counter is called number one. And every time it sees the word dog, it increments that counter by one. So, yeah, so every time we detect the word dog in the serial data stream, this, uh, this counter will be updated. And then the final thing that I've done is, um, is that I've got the... Um, I've got the, this word here, message. So basically, you type in message, and what that does, it prints stuff up on the screen. So whenever um, we see the word dog, it's going to print up on the screen of the, of the protocol analyzer the words dogging spotted. And uh, yeah, that, that's, I just think that's amazing, the fact that you can program these scripts. And obviously, I've, I've just programmed a very simple script there to look for the word dog. And you can also write just very much more complicated scripts than that, looking for things like the uh, the timing differences between, you know, data sets ready and request to send or, or clear to sends, or you can basically look for a parity error and a request to send. So you can you can really monitor an awful lot of things going on in the um, in in the in the background as this thing just sniffs the serial data going past. And I can see what a powerful tool it would actually be. So I'm very impressed with that. Anyway, so let's just see how my test program works. So what happens when we get this uh, this illegal character set coming through, this dog word? Well, let's see. So I'm, I'm just going to send uh, the dog character through now. 
and you heard that the uh, the logic analyzer made a bleep sound and it's put the word dogging spotted at the bottom of the screen so anybody operating this piece of um, test gear would get some warning that something anomalous has happened and then he can maybe go and investigate it and as he sat there trying to figure out what's going on you know he's going around kicking the tires and wobbling the connectors he'll probably be getting more of these uh, dog words coming through so let's send a few more faults through and you can hear every time the uh, protocol analyzer uh, detects this dog word in the serial in the serial string it bleeps and it's also highlighting let's see if we can spot one there's one dog disappeared dog there oops doesn't doesn't last very long I think maybe we can freeze it if we can spot one we'll freeze it all right we've just stopped it there okay so it's just highlighted the g in the word dog so the sort of thing that an engineer might want to do is he might want to know how many of these dog errors he's getting so what you can do with this is you can actually uh, examine the data but what i wanted to point out is we've got the counter here and it says counter one now counter one is what we set up previously and at the moment counter one is showing 22 so that means that we recorded the dog word 22 times there well I think that about covers it for our first look at the HP protocol analyzer and I'm sorry if a little bit of the uh, footage was a little bit disjointed I'm afraid I did my usual trick of uh, you know losing audio tracks and losing some of the video content but in making this video I think I've actually learned quite a lot about RS232 uh, and if nothing else about how how little I actually knew about it before and how complicated it can be and what history it's got and there's certainly a lot more to it than just connecting the uh, the ground and the TX and the RX which is mainly what I seem to connect in most of the cables I had to make up in the past so I think the reality is we probably barely scratched the surface when it comes to RS232 all the capabilities of a protocol analyzer but for today I think that'll do thanks for watching and I hope I see you again soon bye bye for now